So, is .NET 9 good for Blazor? No, it isn't. It's great for Blazor. In this video, we'll look at a basic overview of some of the great new Blazor improvements and enhancements that have been shipped with the latest version of .NET, .NET version 9. This is just an overview video, but we'll do a deeper dive into Blazor and .NET 9 on this channel at some point in the near future. If you're hungry for the delicious details, please check out .NET Conf 2024. The link is in the description of this video. Right, I'll first roll the intro and then we can get But started. Gavin, you don't have an intro. Oh, that's right, I've only got an outro. Right, well, let's get into the video then. Blazor is part of Microsoft's ASP.NET Core ecosystem and integrates seamlessly with backend technologies, making it a powerful tool for modern web application development. Blazor allows developers to build interactive web applications using C Sharp and .NET instead of JavaScript. It provides a full stack solution for developers that want to, for example, build enterprise applications that include sophisticated interactive front ends coupled with highly scalable back ends. In the context of Blazor, the release of .NET 9 kind of reminds me in a very roundabout way of when .NET 6 was released, in that the previous release, .NET 5, was what I would call a game changer. With the release of .NET 5 in 2020, the benefits of .NET Framework were combined with the benefits of .NET Core into one software substrate that would simply be called .NET moving forward. So you have this huge upgrade to .NET 5 where .NET became a fully unified platform. So .NET 5 was the first version of a fully unified .NET. .NET Framework 4.8 was the last version of .NET Framework and .NET Core 3.1 was the last version of .NET Core. The year after .NET 5 was released, .NET 6 was released. So in 2021, .NET 6 was released. The upgrade from .NET 5 to .NET 6, as far as I can see, was not quite as huge as the upgrade to .NET 5 the previous year, but still very significant in that it cemented the unification of .NET. So my point is, with this year's release of .NET 9 in 2024, this year, the game-changing enhancements made to Blazor, think improvements like mixed render modes, with the release of .NET 8, are further cemented along with new excellent improvements and enhancements. So .NET 9 is another significant upgrade to .NET in terms of improvements made to Blazor. I, for one, think it is very encouraging and exciting that Microsoft continues to heavily invest in Blazor, making C Sharp a viable programming language for full-stack enterprise web and hybrid applications, where, as you'll see, you can create C Sharp code in one code base that will run inside browsers as well as on native platforms like Android, iOS, macOS, and, of course, Windows. .NET 9 is just more confirmation from Microsoft that Blazor is a framework that is here to stay. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Please don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will, of course, be greatly appreciated. It would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Digital. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. So let's start by looking at a brief summary of some of the performance improvements. So with .NET 9, Blazor WebAssembly apps start up 25% faster according to Google Lighthouse scores. Blazor server apps are more responsive due to WebSocket message compression. Your static web assets are now optimized with pre-compression and fingerprinting so that your static assets can be efficiently downloaded and cached. As a web developer, have you ever experienced that rather maddening thing that happens when you, for example, update a CSS file only to find that the change you've made didn't propagate through to your users? It's like the universe is gaslighting you or something. It plays with your mind. Well, fingerprinting makes sure that this caching issue doesn't occur. So when you make your shiny button CSS change in production through fingerprinting, your change is immediately propagated through to your client as someone who has been through this ordeal, this is a welcome improvement. So let's discuss .NET Aspire a bit. .NET Aspire is a set of powerful tools, templates, and packages for building observable production-ready apps. .NET Aspire is delivered through a collection of NuGet packages that handle specific cloud-native concerns. 
Cloud native apps often consist of small, interconnected pieces of microservices rather than a single monolithic code base. One of the things I love about ASP.NET Core is how easy it is to seamlessly integrate .NET components with one another in a larger system. For example, it is easy to add the .NET Aspire orchestrator to your Blazor apps from within Visual Studio. What is the .NET Aspire orchestrator? .NET Aspire Orchestrator is a core component of the .NET Aspire framework that manages and coordinates workflows, processes, and service interactions within an application. It acts as a centralized controller, ensuring smooth communication and collaboration between various application components, such as microservices, APIs, and external systems. Here are some key features of .NET Aspire Orchestrator. Workflow management, service coordination, fault handling and resilience, implements retry mechanisms, exception handling, and fallback strategies to ensure reliability, monitoring and logging, tracks the status of workflows, log activities, and provides insights into performance and errors. Scalability, supports dynamic scaling to handle increased loads by distributing tasks across multiple services. Integration support, connects internal application services with external APIs or third-party systems seamlessly. Let's look at a simple example where you have a solution that consists of a Blazor component and a Web API component. You can easily add .NET Aspire Orchestrator support to your solution through Visual Studio. Where necessary, extra .NET projects will automatically be added to your solution as well as relevant middleware configurations. This means the developer doesn't need to be concerned with the details of this, and your solution will automatically be set up to leverage certain benefits provided by the .NET Aspire orchestrator. So .NET Aspire will now be able to orchestrate interactions between the Blazor component and the Web API component, while the components themselves are still very much loosely coupled. So through the addition of minimal amounts of code, .NET Aspire Orchestrator can maintain a reference between the Blazor component and the Web API component, and therefore provide support from the outside, as it were, regarding the interactions between these two disparate components. So through .NET Aspire Orchestrator, the developer is able to model the entire application, which in this simple example is made up of two disparate components, a Blazor component and a Web API component. You can imagine how beneficial this is as your application scales with more components added to the solution. Once .NET Aspire is appropriately set up for your Visual Studio solution, you can leverage features like, for example, service discovery. What is service discovery? It automates the process of identifying service instances, their locations, and availability without requiring manual configuration. Brilliant. OK, so that's what service discovery is. When you're running your app from within Visual Studio, you'll be able to view a dashboard that is created for you, where you can see a list of all the disparate components that make up your solution in the dashboard. From this point, you'll be able to browse to the endpoints of the relevant components and test various aspects, as well as view relevant details of the components. You can view the logs for your components from this central location, as well as the output windows for the relevant components. You can inspect the relevant traces that run through the various workflows of the app. Through .NET Aspire, you can easily monitor the health of your components. In .NET Aspire, health checks are mechanisms used to monitor the health and status of the application components, such as databases, APIs, or services. These checks ensure that the application is running as expected and provide real-time feedback to diagnose issues. Automatic retry management can be done on behalf of the components using .NET Aspire. In .NET Aspire, retries are a resilience mechanism used to handle transient failures in communication between application components or external services. So in our simple example where a Blazor component communicates with a Web API component, let's say that for some reason the relevant network goes down for a small amount of time, during which time your Blazor component makes a call to the Web API component. This workflow won't just fail due to the temporary connection issue. Your Blazor component will periodically keep trying to communicate with the Web API component. The duration between retries can be configured, as well as the number of retries you want the Blazor component to perform before an exception is thrown.
So with .NET Aspire, you can create sophisticated retry functionality between your components through configuration rather than implementing large amounts of code, which is what you'd need to do without a technology like .NET Aspire managing this on your behalf. Going back to the .NET Aspire dashboard, a notable detail about the .NET Aspire dashboard is that Microsoft built it using Blazor and Fluent UI. Right, let's move on to some Blazor-specific improvements that have been shipped with .NET 9. You can now, through code, detect the component render mode at runtime. You can detect a component's render mode using the new Render Info API. This API helps you determine whether the component is rendering interactively or through static server-side rendering, SSR. Here's a code example of how you can detect the render mode of a component at runtime through your code. So in this code, a decision is made at runtime to render a button or output status information to the user, alluding to the fact that the page at this time is not yet completely loaded. So the developer can leverage the increased startup speed provided through static rendering on the server side, SSR, so that pixels are on the screen almost immediately when a user accesses a web page and then only display the relevant button once the component is ready for high-speed interactive usage. This is absolutely excellent for providing a much smoother and overall better user experience, UX. Significant improvements have been made in terms of reconnection logic. This is specifically related to Blazor Interactive Server Components and the SignalR connection. In .NET 9, Blazor's reconnection logic has been significantly improved to enhance reliability and user experience. One of the major benefits is improved WebSocket handling. The WebSocket layer now better manages disruptions, ensuring smoother transitions during temporary disconnections. You can use static SSR in a globally interactive app. This allows a mix of interactivity and static SSR in a single Blazor app, enhancing flexibility and performance. In .NET 9 and Blazor, static server-side rendering, SSR, can be incorporated into a globally interactive app to serve pages that don't require interactivity, improving performance and SEO. So this allows the developer to optimize user experience by providing super fast initial load times for static web pages that don't require user interactivity. Simplified Blazor Authentication State Serialization. With .NET 9 and Blazor, the process of serializing and deserializing the authentication state has been simplified for applications that use both server-side and WebAssembly-based components. Developers can now leverage built-in APIs to streamline authentication state management without implementing verbose boilerplate code manually. Component constructor injection in Blazor with .NET. Constructor injection is a method to provide dependencies to components via their constructors, leveraging the dependency injection framework built into ASP.NET Core. This approach is particularly useful for injecting services, configurations, or other objects into components. Previously, you would, for example, inject components into public properties, but now components, for example, service components, can be injected directly through the constructors of relevant Razor components through dependency injection. Blazor Hybrid Plus Project Template. This has to be one of my favorite improvements. The .NET 9 Blazor Hybrid Plus Web Project Template allows developers to create applications that share a single UI across a .NET MAUI Blazor Hybrid app and a Blazor web app. This new template is designed to streamline development for apps targeting both native platforms like Windows, iOS, and Android via MAUI and the web leveraging a shared Razor class library, RCL. So this makes it easier for the developer to target multiple platforms from one single code base. So you can see that with .NET 9, Microsoft has made Blazor even more awesome. Please check out .NET Conf 2024 where you can wolf down the juicy details. The link is in the description of this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Please don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. It would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Lon Digital.
I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. Please let me know what you love about the release of .NET 9 and how it affects ASP.NET Core and Blazor. If I've left anything out, it will be highly beneficial if you'd include what I've left out in the comments section. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care. Your static web ass, your through fingerprinting, your change is immediately propagated through to your client configurations. This means the, 